Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras. And before we begin, I want to again remind you quickly not to forget about our all-new streaming platform, ILTV Plus, available now on every app store and at ILTV.tv. Now, coming up in today's newscast, weapons thieves beware the IDF officially updating their rules of engagement. Meantime, the government cabinet unanimously approving of a draft bill that would set term limits for the prime minister's office. And finally, Miss South Africa holding strong as her government rejects her and as anti-Israel activists use every means at their disposal to pressure her into boycotting Israel. To begin with JCPOA negotiations set to resume in the coming weeks, the United States Special Envoy for Iran, Robert Malley, arriving in Israel on Sunday for a series of top-level meetings. Malley will be leading the United States delegation for nuclear talks with Iran and other world powers set to restart November 29. But first, Malley will meet with Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz, Mossad Director David Barnea, National Security Advisor Eyal Khalouta, and a number of other security officials. This as part of a 10-day regional trip that began last week. Mali having started his trip in the United Arab Emirates last Thursday and continuing from Israel onto Saudi Arabia and then Bahrain. And the idea is to, quote, coordinate approaches on a broad range of concerns regarding Iran, including its destabilizing activities in the region and the upcoming nuclear talks, end quote. Curiously, however, Mali, who is one of the architects of the original JCPOA nuclear deal, is not meeting with Prime Minister Naftali Bennett. Likewise, it's not clear if he'll even meet with alternate, alternate Prime Minister Yair Lapid. What is clear is that Bennett has very little faith in the JCPOA's success. And while Western powers try to find a way back to the nuclear deal, Israel preparing for its failure. Just this past weekend, Israel participating in another joint military exercise, this time in the Red Sea, alongside forces from the United States, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain. In other news, the Israeli Defense Forces today announcing an update to the official rules of engagement. From now on, soldiers will be allowed to open fire upon smugglers, gun thieves, and other intruders on base. And this, of course, coming on the heels of the increasing war on illegal weapons and smuggling in Israel, which is including the mass weapons capture just last week in the Arab-Israeli sector. Joining to discuss is ILTV reporter Asaf Nisan. Uh, Asaf, thanks so much for being with us. Now, what caused this change in policy? Well, first of all, Aaron, it's always great to be here. And if I would have any, any indication, any specific event, I think we are talking about the mass uh, capture last week. The amount of guns found that were stolen from IDF bases and the increasing crime rate, and of course, the war on the crime in the Arab sector has been going on for the past, couple, past year and even before, of course, is just the pivotal point that's finally caused the Israeli Defense Force to take a new stance about it. I mean, the IDF wasn't engineered to protect its own bases that easily. And of course, in large bases in the South, we see a lot of Bedouins and we see a lot of uh, illegal crime, crime gangs and everyone trying to pretty much steal from those bases and sell, them and sell those guns to the West Bank, which end up, of course, in terrorist hands, terrorist groups, crimes organizations. It doesn't change. So now we're talking about thefts on <clears throat> IDF bases. You know, how, how was that even possible? How many thefts were we talking about, you know, to the point where uh, IDF soldiers on base reportedly could even witness, uh, you know, a theft in progress and not respond? We're talking about numbers varying from last year, we're talking about 100 cases alone. And before that, we're talking about varying between 60 to 80 in the past two years prior to that. So we are seeing an increase in thefts from the IDF bases. and. The problem was the rules of engagement up to now were very limited. I mean, we could see them, of course, defend themselves, but only in an imminent danger. So thus, like you said, soldiers would potentially see thefts, but since they wouldn't uh, immediately cause them any danger, and they knew they couldn't do any rules of, use the rules of engagement for their favor, they couldn't stop them. But we've seen reports, again, we've seen reports not just of, of you know, guns and ammunition being stolen, but also explosives. I mean, all sorts of things have been taken off of IDF bases in, in the past. At what point is imminent danger acknowledged? I think in that case, imminent danger was acknowledged, I mean, up to now, up to the update. We've seen imminent danger as pretty much life-threatening danger per se on the Well, spot. so what does that mean? I mean, does that mean that a soldier, in, you know, in, in hypothetical, would have to wait until he was fired upon? 
I think so. I, would, I don't want to say, say yes for, uh, for sure, but it would be the case. I mean, we're seeing this instance happen in a lot of places, and there's, there's of course, a story with Tselim. Also, from that base, it was one of the mar largest thefts, and there's, there were a lot of protests against it, trying to stop this decision. And, of course, the change is the first step towards finally bringing a new note and finally stopping those thefts. I mean, soldiers could finally stop, stop that crime from happening. And potentially, you know, they could, it, could, it could lead to a danger, of course, of misuse of power. But this is going to be the option for them to defend themselves way easier. Well, so, okay, so what, you know, walk us through some of the changes and how this is going to actively prevent thefts, because I, I'm guessing that the rules of engagement weren't changed enough that, you know, a soldier could shoot a guy in the back if he was making off with a gun. Exactly. We're not talking about a happy trigger uh, change. We're talking about more of a precaution we're seeing now that the IDF uh, embraced the stance of attacking um, weapon thieves. We're talking about smugglers. We're talking about crime, uh, criminals and smugglers and gangs themselves from the South that are bringing stuff from the, are stealing stuff from the bases or bringing drugs through the border. The IDF has more freedom of control to, to stop them on the spot, thus disrupting the line of, uh, the, the line of, distri of, distribute, of distribution and potentially, of course, helping to decrease the crime because once you have no guns, once you have more control on, how, on, on the issue, of course, it's going to lead to a decrease of sales. So what about, again, what about some of the safeguards to prevent, uh, as you put it, some of these trigger-happy uh, accidents or, or, you know, tragedies. We know, for example, right now, uh, under certain rules of engagement, IDF soldiers need to fire, you know, in the air or into the ground or something like that. You know, some sort of warning system. There's, there's a step, there's a number of steps before you can in directly engage, uh, you know, a human being. So what... I, think, I don't think it changed. I think it's still staying the, the same... Or the same order, but we are seeing this more on a, on a, on a large scale. We're seeing the fact that now they can stop those criminals in advance, but of course they're going to have to take the same precautions. And if we do see a misuse of power, for example, I mean, we're still viewing an IDF, the Elo Azaya story. I mean, misuse of power, of course, will have its uh, repercussions, so I wouldn't be surprised. All right, so on a more political note, you know, would this help Prime Minister Bennett? deliver on his promises to stop thefts and, and, you know, help decrease in the violence in the Arab sector. Just, you know, speak on that more specifically. I would say yes, because like I said before, if you do, start, if you do disrupt the line of distribution, you will be able to see a decrease in, we in weapons and decrease in crime. Hopefully, of course, this will lead all, this of course goes along with the right wing that was calling before to stop this, to stop this from happening in the South because they've been saying years the South has been ungoverned, uh, it had been running rampant, it's like a wild west there. So there was a lot of instances of calling out against it anyway. So I think the fact that the IDF d decided to take part in this uh, decision, this is more than a coalition, this is a I think almost a unanimous sanctioned happy decision that's been done finally to stop the, the, the crime and hopefully decrease the crime in the Arab sector. All right, Asaf Nisan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.